The skills that are going to be most in need in the future are critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, the capacity to solve problems. And that's exactly what you'll get in the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture. My name's Claire Annesley. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture at UNSW. This is a place for people who love learning. This is a place for people who care about making a difference. This is a place for people who want to solve problems. And this is your opportunity to really expand your mind and to think about the world in completely new and different ways. One of the things that I love most in this faculty is the way that staff and students bring together their creativity to solve really complex problems. We are creating and generating huge amount of diverse knowledge. And this knowledge is going to be able to help us solve problems related to climate change, inequality, health inequalities, problems like how do we redesign our cities to accommodate the growing population across the world. So I think it's important to understand that when you come to university, this is your time. This is your education. This is your opportunity to explore all of the things that matter to you. And our degrees offer students a huge amount of flexibility. You will have the opportunity to try out different courses, different combinations of courses, until you find the thing that you want to settle on, the thing that you think will help to design the life that you want, or to make the impact that you want to have in the world. So studying at UNSW ADA, you can expect to be challenged, to have your mind blown, to be surprised, to stretch your skills, to become a leader, to collaborate, to problem solve. And all of these things will set you up and carry you for the rest of your life. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Arts, Design and Architecture Information Evening. My name is Stephen Doherty and I'm the Associate Dean for Education in the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture, or ADA as we like to call it. We've got a wonderful event in store for you tonight where we'll hear from many colleagues um, in the faculty and across the university and also from, also from our wonderful students as well. Um, we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers and discussion at the end. The session will be recorded and we'll also add closed captions and send all of the information, recording and follow up questions after the show as well. So tonight, as I say, we have a wonderful um, selection of different pieces of information and experiences that we'd like to share with you from across the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture. But before we begin, I'd like to first start by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we work here at UNSW. For many of us on the Kensington campus, that's the um, Bejigal people, but also in Paddington, the Gadigal people. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge any First Nations colleagues with us online or all over the world. We look forward to welcoming you on campus as well. So first of all, we'll hear from our Dean of Arts, Design and Architecture, Professor Claire Annesley. Professor Annesley is also a world-renowned researcher and educator and has been the founding Dean of the faculty. Over to you, Claire. So as Stephen said, we've got a lot of information for you this afternoon, uh, this evening. From my perspective, I think there's three takeaways that I'd like you to really grab. The first is about the diversity of our faculty. And by that, I mean the diversity, the big range of subjects that you can study here, the opportunities that you'd have and the experiences that you'd be able to gather here in the faculty diversity. The second thing is flexibility. 
We've designed our degree so that you can combine subject in really interesting ways. Some of you might know what you want to do. You might want to become an architect or a city planner or a teacher. Some of you might have no idea. And we've got opportunities for all of you. And we've designed our degree so that you don't need to know now. You can design your future with us as we go. The third thing is employability. It's really, really important to us that our graduates go on and do amazing things. We prepare our students with the skills and experience and knowledge that they need, not just to get their first job, but to really set themselves um, up for a career for life, a really fulfilling career in the area that they're really passionate about. So diversity, flexibility and employability are the three things that I'm going to keep coming back to um, across my little presentation. And there's just a few highlights that I'd like to share with you. The first is just a flag that we're top five in Australia for arts and humanities and top 40 globally for architecture. We're first in Australia and fifth globally for the international um, our research international research network in arts and humanities we really pride ourselves in that global orientation of our education and our experiences and part of that for students is being able to study or work globally as part of their degrees we have connections with about 200 partner universities in 38 countries and that really sets you up for success You'd also be taught by research leaders in your fields, bringing that cutting edge, like state of the art knowledge into the classroom. And we also bring into the classroom industry leaders, practitioners, people who are working in their fields and also want to teach. So you get that industry connections as well. We have lots of opportunities for what we call work integrated learning, it, um, internships, practicums, experience in work while you're studying so that when you graduate, you're ready to go for that first job, second job, your third job. And also we're really proud of the facilities that we have in um, the campus, um, both on our Kensington campus and our dedicated campus for art and design in Paddington, which really gives um, students that opportunity to use their creativity and those practical skills to solve problems and really make a difference. So here are the degrees that we offer in the faculty. And um, what I want to call out is what I said before, that we have degrees that are you know, professionally accredited, those ones that set you up for a profession to be able to practice in the future, architecture, social work, education, city planning, construction management, all of those degrees might be the ones that you know that you already want to do. And then we have a whole range of degrees like um, our Bachelor of Arts, our Bachelor of Design, our Bachelor of Media, our Bachelor of Social Sciences or PPE, Politics, Philosophy um, and Economics, which are degrees that are hugely flexible and rich in terms of creative thinking and the skills that the employers are all looking for today. And the magic with our education is that you can combine these in a number of different ways. We have 39 double degree combinations within the faculty, but also with other faculties, um, with business and engineering and law and medicine and health and science. And um, that really, again, helps you to combine your passion with a vocation um, to really combine those skills to set you up for success. So those are the degrees that we have And this slide. <laughs> I don't know how clear that is, um, but the slide, um, if we can go, just go back one. Um, just that one. That slide um, shows you that diversity that I was talking about at the start. So you can see all the different subject areas and specialisations that you can choose in the faculty. So in our Bachelor of Arts, for example, there are 30 majors to choose from. And the way that we've designed that degree is that in three years, you can do three majors. So you could do, I don't know, Asian studies and global development and linguistics and graduate with three separate um, majors. Um, in our design specialization, in our design degree, we have three specializations. We have um, 
Uh, in fine arts, we have music as one of our specializations. In social sciences, we have international studies as one of our specializations. In media, we have five different specializations. So my point is there's a very, very rich diversity for you to choose from and to be able to combine in very exciting and unique ways. Um, my next point was just to say a little bit more about the double degree combinations. Those double degrees that I mentioned give you, you know, kind of double impact in terms of the knowledge that you have, the skills that you have, um, you know, what you can take into the world of work after you graduate. There are real killer combinations that set you up for real success. And what you can see in the table, the light blue table, is some of the most popular combinations um, from our new students in 2023. 20, um, so there we've got design and media, which um, you know is really a fantastic combination for somebody who, you know, for example, might want to, um, you know, do a specialism in graphic design while combining it with screen production from a media degree, and that sets you up for becoming a content or a social media producer, really relevant skills for any modern company. Um, we've also got um, commerce and media, commerce and design, science and arts, PPE and law. Most of those, the way that we've designed our degrees is that you can do a double degree in four years. PPE and law takes a little bit longer, but um, four years for those killer combinations, I think is a really, really interesting thing for you to bear in mind um, during, during this presentation. It really sets you up for success. I mentioned at the start employability. UNSW is really proud of the fact that we come top in the rankings for the employability of our students when they graduate and also the um, graduate salaries that they get when they graduate. Our students are incredibly employable. And this is because we have work integrated learning and kind of career readiness and practical learning designed into our programs. So some examples are that um, our Bachelor of City Planning students do a whole year as a practice year. Our social work students have field work placements. Um, the Bachelor of Education have to do 80 days professional placements. Our fine arts and, um, and design students, um, students have professional experience projects. And the Bachelor of Media has internship courses, for example, um, creative writing internships. So those practical work-oriented skills are like baked into all of our programs. And that's one of the reasons our students are so employable. I said a little bit about facilities and I just want to show a slide that showcases some of them. We have um, um, design labs, maker spaces, um, we have a theatre on campus, we have fantastic facilities for students um, to study or to take part in active learning. We've invested a lot in the latest equipment for our students so that they have Amazing sound recording studios, editing suites, screen rooms, green screens, image capture labs, performing spaces, maker studios. And that's something that we are super proud of. Finally, I'm going to say a little bit about graduate destinations. Here are just some examples of the types of the careers that students from our different programs go on to do. But I want to wind up by just introducing you to a couple of our very recent graduates so that you can get a sense of what your future might be if you studied one of our degrees. So Anna Kurtzi was um, a student who studied the Bachelor of Media Studies with us. And she also gained a huge amount of international experience and communication skills in her degree. And she went on to combine that with her real kind of entrepreneurial spirit and a strategic approach to tackling some of the world's most pressing problems. Samuel Beatty is an artist and a graduate um, of our faculty whose work um, artistic work really delves into the intimate and vulnerable realities of being transgender and through their work is able to offer alternative forms of queer and trans representation to other gender explorers on similar journeys. And Rachel Vasila is the last student that I will just flag. And she is somebody who combines her creativity with problem solving. And she established 
a, um, uh, a f and she founded an organization called Kelpist, which brings together regeneration, um, you know, the concept of regeneration from the ocean floor into furniture making to produce innovative materials for sustainable products. Um, and, you know, it's one of those real next generation eco-conscious change makers that come out of the faculty and we are so proud of. So just want to recap. That diversity is something that you've heard about. The flexibility of our degrees is something that really works in your favour, helps you design the future that you want for yourself. And the employability, the skills and the experience and the knowledge that you would gain from a degree in ADA at UNSW sets you up not just for your first job, but like a career um, doing something like Anna or Samuel or Rachel. Thank you very much. And I really look forward to meeting some of you very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claire. It's wonderful to hear all of these uh, important highlights about the faculty. And we'll talk more about employability and flexibility of pathways in just a little bit. Uh, but first, we'd love to share with you a recent interview we've done with our students to showcase some of the wonderful facilities we had in our Paddington campus. Um, so I'd like to introduce to you now uh, Kira and Rebecca. Uh, these are two students um, who are every day enjoying these facilities on campus. Kira is a third year student in her Bachelor of Design and Rebecca is a dual degree student in the Bachelor of Fine Arts and Education. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm in my second year studying Bachelor of Fine Arts and Secondary Education. I specialize in drawing and animation and um, I'm currently joined by Kira. Did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kira O'Reilly. I'm in my final year studying a Bachelor of Design at UNSW and we're currently in the printmaking studio. So why did you choose to study design at UNSW? So when I left high school, um, I knew I was really passionate about design but wasn't sure what avenue of design I wanted to go into. And when I was looking at the courses available, um, I saw that UNSW had their Bachelor of Design that was quite versatile and had a lot of disciplines that you could try out. Um, and I found that really enticing. Yeah, I heard that you're specializing in um, textiles and objects. So what's your favorite part about learning about them? Yeah, so when you start off with design, you get to choose sort of what areas of design you want to go to go into and textiles and objects were the ones I chose. I think for me, I loved the hands-on aspect of them. So that was definitely what drew me towards those courses. And a lot of the design that I like to do is very people and planet driven. So I want to make things that are actually purposeful. So you're doing fine arts and secondary education. What drew you into that? So um, I chose UNSW because they offered fine arts as a double degree with education. So because I wanted to become like a high school visual arts teacher, it was a perfect pathway for me. And I originally planned to specialize in drawing and photography, but then I wanted to kind of step outside my comfort zone and try something that I haven't um, tried before during my high school years. So that's why I um, picked animation. And whereas like 2D animation kind of correlates with my um, drawing specialization, um, 3D anim animation has been something that's outside my comfort zone. And it's really interesting so far. So what are you making right now? So currently I'm working on a zinc plate that I've previously etched up in class with the hard ground and aquatint. And so we're just gonna put some ink on it today and roll it through the press to get a transfer on paper. Interesting. So we'll just go over to the press now and we'll um, print it onto the paper. So out of all the printmaking process, what like fascinated you the most? I think for me, I like the versatility of it. So it's really broad in terms of, um, you can try so many different techniques and get a lot of the same outcome or very different outcomes, but through a range of different ways, which is really cool. Yeah, and I can see that there are so many different equipments and facilities here. How did you get to learn like how to use them? So throughout the weeks of the course, um, you get to, I guess, step through the process of how to do it and how to complete it as well. And that's each week you're sort of learning a new technique throughout the whole term. That's amazing. So do you spend most of your time here on campus? Yeah, so I spend most of my time at Paddington campus as well. So most of the time in the printmaking studio or the ceramic studio. And I also find myself in the textile studio a lot as well. That's amazing. I also like how on campus there are so many like facilities and equipment available for us to use whenever we want to. Yeah. Even like because I major in um, drawing, but I also sometimes come over here to work on my projects as well. So I love the flexibility that's available on campus as well. Oh wow, this looks amazing. Is this the yeah. final step? 
Yeah, so this is the final step of the printmaking part. Um, and then you just set the paper aside to dry. And then you can also press the paper as well, so it's nice and flat. Hmm, that's nice. It was really nice to um, chat to you today. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's session. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>my name's Tom Richards and I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Manager Partner Engagement in the UNSW Employability Team. In my role, I collaborate with the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture to really build opportunities and partnerships for students across careers and employability. And thanks so much to the ADA team for inviting me to speak with you today. First of all, why is employability important? As you'd probably be aware, the real world is constantly changing and so too are the professional skills that most employers value the most. You can see here that the top five skills for 2025, as predicted by the World Economic Forum, they are active learning and learning strategies, complex problem solving, creativity, originality, and initiative, analytical thinking and innovation, and critical thinking and analysis. Are these what you would have expected to be in the top five? Here at UNSW, our employability performance is recognised as one of the highest in the country. As you can see here, we are number one across a range of areas, from most employable university to median undergraduate and postgraduate salaries in the group of eight universities. ADA graduates are working across Australia and the globe, across a range of sectors and industries, including advertising, PR and communications, architecture, the media, design, visual arts, construction, education, environment, all levels of government, infrastructure, property and development, non-government organisations, charities, not-for-profits, plus many more. From self-reported LinkedIn data, we can see that recent ADA graduates, less than seven years out, are working at a diverse range of organisations. And these include the ABC, Animal Logic, the Art Gallery of New South Wales, Canva, Cathay Pacific, Commonwealth Bank, CNN, the Greater London Authority, New South Wales Government and Public Sector Agencies, Pfizer, SBS, The Smith Family, Sydney Metro, Uber, UNICEF and World Vision. And that's just a short selection. Well, what can we do for you here at UNSW? Well, there's no one size fits all approach to employment. We really help you to focus on adaptive skills, skills like curiosity, communication and resilience to help you to become a well-rounded graduate. And you know what? It's completely okay to not know what you want to do. Here are some questions though that you might ask yourself to help you to understand your motivations, your interests and your passions, which could really help to lead you to a more rewarding career. You might be asking things like, what impact can I make? Where might my career take me? And perhaps most importantly of all, what am I most passionate about? We offer you a wide range of programs to help you on your employability journey here at UNSW, from internships and real world experiences, to one-on-one -on -one individual coaching sessions with career coaches, to mentoring with established industry professionals, to leadership and professional development programs, and even industry events where you can build connections and network with employers. Who knows, maybe you might meet your future employer at one of these events. ADA students have participated in partner projects which are interdisciplinary across the university with a diverse range of organisations. And these have included the Australian National Maritime Museum, Breville, EY, Jacobs, Macquarie Group, Nestle, Purina, Oxfam, Oz Harvest, The Powerhouse, Randwick City Council, Service New South Wales and the Sydney Football Club. So a really wide variety of, of places. We even have global partner projects where our students have travelled to Singapore and London, 
And we're very excited to um, let you know that Sinzu will be heading to Japan later this year as well. Well, that's it from me. I really encourage you to head to our UNSW Employability webpage and you can find out more at the QR code that's up on the screen. Find out more about what we do and what we offer. Thanks again and all the best as you navigate your future studies. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Tom. It's fantastic to hear about all of the wonderful opportunities we have for ADA students and the fantastic places they can go all over the world in these wonderful career pathways. And speaking of pathways, a really important piece to us at UNSW Arts, Design and Architecture is increasing the access and participation in all of our undergraduate programs. Um, we have a number of scholarships and pathways that we'd like to highlight with you um, this evening and then talk in more detail in a little bit about our uh, wonderful portfolio entry scheme. So you'll see here quite a selection of different opportunities available to students. And these are available to all students in different categories. So whether you're a domestic student, remote and regional, international student, undergraduate, postgraduate, mature student returning to education, it's really worth having a look at the scholarships website. It allows you to tailor a profile unique to you and have suggestions for scholarships that are eligible and maybe of interest to you. Some highlights are the ADA Undergraduate Scholarship or General Merit Undergraduate Scholarship, the Sternberg Family Scholarship for Fine Arts, Arts and Law Combinations, and also the wonderful UNSW Equity Scholarships. For those of you who are international students, we also have articulation scholarships, an international student award, and an undergraduate international award, just to name a few. It's really worth checking out the scholarships. They are large and small and can make a significant difference um, at different times in your career as well. We also have different admission pathways into the degrees in arts, design, and architecture. Through our partnership with UNSW Global, um, we're able to support and bring through international students who don't quite meet the requirements for our undergraduate degrees, but need some support in academic English, uh, academic skills more broadly. And for those students, we have some suggestions here to highlight. The wonderful Foundation Studies programs prepare you for um, the first year of study at UNSW ADA, whereas our diplomas in media and in architecture give you direct access to the second year of study in your program. And for most programs, that's two in three years or even two in four for a double degree. So it's a substantial reduction in the duration of your program in doing these academic um, additions in your first year. We also then, in Arts, Design and Architecture, and also through UNSW Global, offer significant language support for academic English for all of our domestic and international students who may need that little bit of support to get through um, their degree with us in Arts, Design and Architecture. We have some exciting additions uh, this year to highlight as well through our TAFE Pathways uh, programs. And these are a wonderful way of recognizing credit and previous study for students who may have done a diploma or an advanced diploma in TAFE in some of the areas of expertise that we have in the faculty. Um, so by doing a TAFE diploma or advanced diploma, as you know, this, uh, this is recognized by the AQF or the Australian Qualifications Framework. It allows us to really easily see the prior study that you've done in that particular area and give you credit or recognition of prior learning for that. So you can come into the degree later in your second year, for instance, or towards the end of the first year. It really depends on the different degrees that you've done uh, and, and the diplomas that are there as well. To highlight some of these, we have a Bachelor of Social Work pathway, also in design, fine arts, and some additional programs that we'll be offering later in the year, and another reason to come to us for open day and participate in the events we have uh, throughout the year. Now, um, I'll move over to uh, introduce my colleague, Nick Fay, who's the head of Future Students Recruitment for UNSW, who's going to talk to us a little bit more about the wonderful portfolio entry pathway into our UNSW ADA programs. Thank you very much, Stephen. Look, pleasure to be here tonight. And I'm really, really excited because some of you may be familiar with our portfolio entry scheme already. And that's great. But we've got some really exciting news today to be able to announce that we're actually expanding this scheme to include early conditional offers. So this is really a way for you to be able to showcase to us your passion, your creativity, and your potential by demonstrating this through a portfolio of works. 
You might be showcasing some of your fine arts work that you've been doing throughout year 11 and year 12. You might also be you know, bringing together a portfolio of your written work. It really depends on the particular field of study that you're applying for. Now, the way it will work, you'll be eligible to receive potentially an early conditional offer which has an adjusted ATAR requirement up to 10 ATAR points below the lowest selection rank. Now, this will be for a specific degree or indeed a range of related degrees. And it really is about boosting your chance of admissions at the end of the day. So submitting your portfolio entry application, it's a quick, painless process. And at the end of the day, will only ever uh, increase your chances of gaining admission to UNSW Arts, Design and Architecture, and indeed UNSW Engineering, as we'll cover in a moment. As we move to the next slide though, you'll see that portfolio entry really is for domestic applicants who are firstly applying for an eligible degree that's offered within portfolio entry. And indeed, at Arts Design and Architecture, the majority of programs are covered under portfolio entry. So it really is in your best interest to be able to you know, maximize your chances for admission by applying through portfolio entry. And indeed also applying through UAC um, through the normal means because you may well be eligible based on your ATAR um, alone, and we'll talk about how that works. Um, but on the flip side, you're also maximizing your chances by submitting your portfolio, potentially having an adjusted ATAR re requirement that you'll need to meet. Um, and indeed, as I said before, that'll be within 10 ATAR points um, of that lowest selection rank. So if you're anticipating having an ATAR within that that lowest um, 10 ATAR points of that, that so within 10 ATAR points of that lowest selection rank, definitely worth applying. Um, you'll be able to find those ATAR requirements on our Degree Finder website. If you type in UNSW Degree Finder, um, and indeed my colleagues in the wings can be able to post in uh, a link to the Degree Finder as well. Um, you can jump in, have a look at the degrees you're interested in, have a look at the lowest selection rank for 2023 entry, um, because that will give you a really good idea for what you'd be aiming for for next year in 2024. We don't anticipate the ATARs will change dramatically. And indeed, if you're expecting an ATAR within 10 points of that lowest selection rank, we really do encourage you to apply through portfolio entry. Now, as I mentioned, this applies for most degrees across arts, design, and architecture. And it also applies to a, a large number of programs across uh, the Faculty of Engineering through their Faculty of Engineering Admissions Scheme. So uh, most of you here on the call are, are probably applying for the Arts, Design and Architecture programs, but worth knowing that there is a, you know, a breadth of offerings through portfolio entry. Now, how do you actually apply? The first thing you need to do, you need to apply through the university's admission center. And indeed, your careers advisor has probably already been hounding you at this stage, or your parents, um, or indeed your peers who might have jumped on uh, on the 5th of April and, and applied uh, straight through UAC and put in their preferences already if they're really organized. Don't panic. I put my preferences in very late, uh, but still got to where I wanted to get to. So you've got plenty of time. Firstly, they'll apply through UAC. Um, and once you've applied through UAC, that then will mean that you've got your UAC number, which you'll need for your UNSW portfolio entry submission. So you jump onto our, our portfolio website. You can see the, the link there at the very bottom. Um, and that will allow you to go through our portal um, and begin the process of applying for portfolio entry. Um, you do need to make sure that you're listing your preferred degree as your highest eligible preference within UAC though. Uh, that allows us to ultimately make an offer at the end of the day, and we'll talk about how that works in step three. So step two, prepare and submit your portfolio. Now, you're gonna build out your, your portfolio of work. You might even have had uh, you know, a range of kind of work across year 11 and year 12 that you can already pull together as part of that. But I encourage you to jump onto our website, um, again, use the link below, to work through the criteria that we're looking for. We really guide you fairly closely around what we're looking for, and at the end of the day, remember, we're looking for you to be able to show us that you have that potential to succeed in your first year of studies and indeed beyond. Um, we really want to set you up for success. So we're looking for that creativity. We're looking for that spark. Um, bring your passion and showcase it through um, that portfolio work. Um, and indeed, the, the particular requirements that you'll actually complete, it might be you know, a short video, for example, a personal statement, a cover letter, a portfolio of you know, written or um, artistic work will depend on the particular degree um, that you're applying for. Step three, you'll receive your portfolio entry early conditional offer if you're, you're successful. Um, and indeed, that will have uh, an adjusted ATAR requirement in the offer letter itself. Um, which you need to meet um, at the, the, the end of the day. So you'll go through, you'll finish your HSC exams, um, you'll receive your ATAR um, in mid-December, and then that gives you the opportunity to convert that early conditional offer to a firm offer. So you'll still need to meet that adjusted ATAR requirement. And the second criteria is you'll have to ensure that um, the preferred degree, you know, one of those eligible degrees, um, is your highest eligible preference in UAC. Um, now for New South Wales and ACT applicants, that's December round two. 
Um, and then for our interstate and IB colleagues who are joining us, um, that's going to be in January round one, based on when your results are released. Um, at the end of the day, that allows us to, to make an offer. Um, so if it is your highest eligible preference, you've met that adjusted ATAR requirement, brilliant. That's your ticket into arts, design, and architecture because you've been able to showcase that potential um, and uh, we're able to reward that. Now, if we jump to the next slide, we can see the timeline for 2024. We're going to be opening our portal in mid-May um, and the first round of on-time applications is going to close um, in the middle of July. We're then going to be releasing early conditional offers on Friday the 1st of September and then excitingly, um, as Stephen already alluded to before, our UNSW Open Day is Saturday the 2nd of September. So um, hopefully for many of you, you'll receive your early conditional offer um, on the Friday and then be able to come and celebrate with us on the Saturday um, as you really immerse yourself in student life and everything uh, that you'll be able to experience here as a UNSW student. We do have a late round of applications as well, though, um, that will open on Open Day itself and we'll go all the way through till after the HSE exam. So you've got plenty of time on the back end to complete your portfolio application. And then we'll be releasing that second round of early conditional offers on Friday, the 8th of December, just before that main round of offers in December round two. And as I said, it depends on uh, whether you're a New South Wales and ACT applicant um, or whether you're an interstate or IB applicant as to which round you'll be eligible for. We'll be updating our website really shortly with all of this information. You're, you're actually the first to hear about this. So we're phenomenally excited on our end to be able to announce that we're introducing these early conditional offers as part of portfolio entry. And we really help, you know, we really hope at the end of the day um, it's a, a ticket to success for you and allows you to get to that dream degree. Um, so that's it for portfolio entry. I'm going to throw back to Stephen now. And in fact, I'm actually going to join him in the adjacent room. And we're going to dive into a bit of a QA and a uh, with some of our students. So Stephen, back over to you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Nick. Uh, so good to hear the latest news about portfolio entry. And we know from years of experience with students and employers how important portfolio entry is. So as I mentioned before, if there's anything that um, we don't get time for or that is individual to your situation, we'll follow up with you right after the, the show. Um, I've got with me today a wonderful panel, some, some of whom you've already met. Um, Nyanika, who is an arts law student in her sixth year. Welcome, Nyanika. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, whom you know from the earlier video, who has magically come from Paddington <laughs> to join us here in Kensington from the print studio, um, who is in our Bachelor of Fine Arts and Education, and Nick, whom you just heard from a little bit earlier. So we've got a great breadth of, of knowledge and experiences to share with you. So literally, ask us anything. Wonderful. Look, I might, I might jump in. I, I've been gifted the iPad for this evening. I'm actually going to start with a question for Nyonika, um, and that is, as a, an arts law student, what, what are you, you know, and, and you're in your sixth year, so you're approaching kind of that, that pointy end. We've spoken a bit about career and employability and, and what that looks like when you graduate. For you, what, what has it been like in terms of getting involved in some of those industry experiences as part of your degree? And indeed, if, if we can ask here, put you on the spot, what does that next step look like when you graduate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think throughout the entire process, it's just been excitement um, because, I mean, you generally start a degree with like arts and law thinking there's a lot to worry about. You're competing against the crowd. You know, that's something that mm -hmm. you feel like you have to sort of participate in through HSC or year 12 if you're an international student. But um, I think the joy of doing a double degree like arts and law is that it opens up so many worlds for you. Um, that you realize that it's actually just your own race that you have to figure out. Um, and for me, it's that process of, you know, appreciating my law degree, appreciating um, the sort of forward thinking that arts really gave me. I've, I've had the time to slow down and think about the impact I'm going to have and where do I really want to end up with that impact. Um, I've had the opportunity to work um, at the Youth Steering Committee with the Minister for Youth at the moment. Um, I've had the opportunity to work for the Multicultural Youth Affair Network as the New South Wales representative. So um, it's a lot of these unique opportunities that I have through my degree that have really allowed me to understand where I want to end up. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in that social impact space, meet people, have alumni, you know, have mentors as well and professors who really understand um, what you want to do with that degree. So it's it's been really broad, uh, but it's been good in the sense that I have had the opportunity to experiment with different industries uh, with both of my degrees as well mm -hmm. um, and know that, you know, in terms of next steps, I know I want to go into the field of law, but have a very big focus on my arts degree as well in terms of social impact that I have. Wonderful. And have you got a, a grad job lined up or are we, are we jumping a step ahead there? Oh, you're jumping a bit too far <laughs> ahead. I'm, I'm getting there. Excellent. 
Well, good, good luck on behalf of all of us. Thank you. Um, and Rebecca, obviously we heard from you before, uh, but I might ask a similar question in terms of some of those industry opportunities. You're only in second year, so you might have had exposure to some, I guess, in the classroom. Do you have any lined up? Yeah, so actually um, I'm on my um, term one right now, but mm -hmm. from term three, I'm starting my placement already. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and um, I've been taking like um, theory classes that really helps me kind of build up that profound knowledge in how to interact with students and understand their circumstances. So I feel very um, ready and confident Correct. in going into high school settings. And even like this role itself, like working as student ambassadors already helped me kind of build that um, like first hand experience of mm. like, you know, visiting different high schools, interacting with high school students. So yeah, like so far I feel so ready and <laughs> I, I feel very grateful that I'm getting all these opportunities to, you know, um, build that um, like industry connections and experiences. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, wonderful. Look, well, I can see we've got a few questions coming in around portfolio entry, which uh, I feel like Stephen and I are probably going to answer a lot of them. Stephen, I'm going to throw to you first, though. Um, and you, you know, you've assessed many, I'm going to say hundreds, if not thousands, of portfolio entry applications over the years. What are you looking for in a really great portfolio entry application? What does a good portfolio look like? I, I think you said it best, Nick, when you were saying about potential. So it's really about potential. Um, and I've got colleagues in architecture who give a really good example where it's it's not showing us a building that you've designed and, and created the blueprints. We'll show you how to do that. It's it's things that you spot in your everyday life, on the, on the bus to school, something you've seen on TV, subtitles on Netflix, a story in social media, and showing us what that means to you and how you think that that is important or has some impact on the world. The tools, the knowledge, the skills, we'll do all of that. Um, so the thing that stands out is that potential, that personal story. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to be somebody else. You don't have to be a cookie cutter. It's really just tell us your story. Some of them bring a smile to our faces. Some of them bring a tear sometimes. But it's really wonderful to hear all of the different challenges, struggles, and opportunities that we have um, all throughout uh, the country and, and internationally, and how we see people from really diverse backgrounds and, and really different stories to share with us. So it's really exciting to see that. And I think having the early conditional offer this year for the first time will really open that up to more people than ever before. Definitely. Uh, and look, on that note, I might cover off just a few of the admissions -y questions which are filtering through on portfolio entry. So I'll do a bit of a rapid fire here. Um, someone's asked, do adjustment factors count towards the adjusted ATAR you need to meet for your early conditional offer? Um, the answer is no. It, it is based on, on your actual, you know, your raw ATAR that you act provide. That's because adjustment factor schemes work in different ways um, to give you admission into the university. So portfolio entry um, works as its own independent scheme and the adjustment factor schemes work in other ways. So um, things like the HSC Plus scheme, our Elite Athlete Performers and Leaders scheme, and indeed the Educational Access Scheme uh, through UAC, they all count separately, um, but they don't count towards that adjusted ATAR um, that you need to meet. Really important to note, though, that you might achieve the ATAR to get straight into your dream degree. You might apply for portfolio entry, and indeed we, we see, you know, I'd say almost 25% of applicants who are applying for this, they apply because they're really passionate, they want to submit a portfolio, um, and then they end up achieving the ATAR anyway, and they surprise themselves in the, in the HSC, which is phenomenal. So remember that there's, there's a number of different adjustment factor schemes out there, and, and I've kind of touched on some of them already, um, which will support you to, to get that ATAR that you're looking for. So you might gain direct entry, even though you've applied for um, a, you know, an early conditional offer through portfolio entry. Um, but if so, that's brilliant. If not, you know, and, and you meet that adjusted ATAR, then that equally puts you in a really solid position um, to, to gain entry into arts, design, and architecture. Same with the admissions questions. Um, another question here around what is the difference between a portfolio entry early conditional offer um, and an unconditional offer? So a bit of university jargon here, which we absolutely love. You're going to get used to this in your first year of universities, I, I guarantee it. Um, but a, an early conditional offer means that it's a, an offer that's got some kind of condition attached to it. So in this case, it's an adjusted ATAR requirement you need to meet. Um, and the second criteria is it has to be your highest eligible preference in UAC because that's the only way we're able to make an offer. So um, UAC give you five preferences um, and each offer round, they can only give you one offer. And now this is for domestic applicants. Um, and they'll give it to your highest eligible preference. So they'll work their way down the list. Have you met those requirements? Yes or no? If no, they'll keep working down the list till they get to a degree that they can offer you. Um, so they're the, the two kind of criteria. To have an unconditional, or in this case, a, a firm offer is the way we'd phrase it, um, you, again, have to just meet those requirements. So um, you get your early conditional offer in, say, September, if you're applying in that on-time application round. And then when you get to uh, December round two, if you're a New South Wales and ACT applicant, um, it's your highest eligible preference. You've met the adjusted ATAR. Brilliant. Then you'll get a firm offer uh, to your preferred degree. 
So really good question. A um, little bit of terminology there. Hopefully that primes everyone uh, and uh, you know, demystifies some of that. Um, another question around whether foundation students um, and international students are eligible for portfolio entry. Um, unfortunately, they're not. Um, so there's a number of other uh, you know, entry points for foundation students uh, and international students. Um, so worth jumping onto the, the website. Um, you can just type in uh, you know, UNSW Degree Finder, pick your preferred degree, and in fact, it'll cover off all the um, different schemes um, and uh, pathways that are eligible for you there. Um, but unfortunately, international students are not eligible through uh, early conditional offers uh, for portfolio entry. And we might hold, there's a few more portfolio entry questions that are coming through. Uh, we might hold them for now because I'm conscious we've got our, our students here and I really want to tap into some of your, your knowledge and expertise. Um, I might throw to you, Nionica, as a, a six year student, you know, we touched a little bit before on that mm -hmm. student life side of things. What has been your most rewarding experience in, in terms of just that, that student experience outside of the classroom? I think we've heard a lot about inside the classroom. What about outside the classroom? Yeah, absolutely. I think it just goes to what Rebecca said before, it's just being grateful for those opportunities. Um, and I think it's that a sense of gratefulness is what I've just taken through all of my six years. It's whether the people I've met through, you know, professors or even the friends that I've made, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them end up becoming people you sometimes live in share houses with, people you end up in jobs with, um, you know, people you cry over assignments with. <laughs> um, there's that whole spectrum that you find. So I think the essence has just been I'm super grateful for the kind of people. And it's amazing because you have all of these amazing people doing fantastic things and they're so humble about it at mm. UNSW. Um, so it's, it's really nice to sort of see them achieving all of these amazing things, um, both in and outside the classroom as well. Brilliant. And Rebecca, I'm going to ask the same question of you because, yeah. you, again, you kind of, you know, just in the, the, the kind of the, the cusp of your second year, mm -hmm. well, actually more than that, you, you know, you've gone through exams for term yep. one. So I'd say you're well and truly into your second year then. Yes. But what about the student life side of things? How, how have you been able to get that balance? Yes. So um, I really, really like that UNSW, we have so many societies. We have more than 300 societies. And um, it's not just about like academic aspect that they can mm -hmm. help because for my education degree, I joined like education society where they ran a lot of workshops that helped you actually like complete your assessment tasks. Right which helped me throughout my first year when I was very unfamiliar with all the university jargon and how mm -hmm. they mark um, some tasks and stuff. And other than that, we have a lot of societies solely dedicated for social life as well. Like just to give you an example, like Dog Appreciation Society. I know people <laughs> send photos of dogs to each other and we have like Hot Pot Society. They go around and eat hot pot with each other. Like it's so fun. It's so many, like we have social events every week um, and you're not like, it's not compulsory for you to attend. Like, you know, yep. you, when you have other obligations, you can pause that for a bit and when you're free you can always join so I like that flexibility and the choices I get yeah wonderful and Nyanika I might just come back to you have you joined any societies slash I've what it, through so many societies too many okay, too okay, many, okay fair think. enough so uh, what, what would you say is your favorite society then if you had to boil it down to one? Oh, if I oh this is a hard one I do a double degree you can't ask me <laughs> to pick one I would be partial and I would say Law Society is a firm first fair enough, fair because enough. I like the competitions they offer. Yep. But my arts and my politics and IR society comes to a close second because sitting down and having political debates with, you know, people in the middle of the day yep. and worrying everyone around you, <laughs> absolute fun thing to do. Fair enough. No, I, I, I love that. And again, I'm asking the really hard questions here. So, um, you know, you're doing well so far under pressure. <laughs> Stephen, I'm going to come back to you um, for a question here around the, the learning style here. What someone's asked, what percentage of classes are offered face to face, um, and what percentage are offered online? How, mm -hmm. how does that that work? And I guess for a lot of students as well, uh, they may have gone through being online during COVID in, in some of their senior studies. So um, they're probably wondering what that looks like at a university context. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And and you know the the post COVID world of education is very different to the expectations that we had before. And as Claire had mentioned earlier, we've invested a significant amount of resources into training staff in and how to use the latest technology in the hardware, in the software, but also in, in the digital content, the multimodal, the videos, the interactive quizzes, and the different assignments that we have. So it's a really good mix of face-to-face of -face and online. Most of our postgraduate programs uh, have online offerings or hybrid offerings where it can be um, simultaneous but also accessible in your own time. But for our domestic uh, programs, it's mostly on campus. Um, and that's because uh, a lot of students are really keen, particularly the students that you've just mentioned, to have that um, on-campus experience. And um, that, that's not to say there aren't uh, flexible options. So we'll have in many courses a lecture that's um, on campus, but it's recorded. So if you miss it, um, that's fine. You can, you can catch 
it later. Some of them are live streamed as well, like this. Um, and then some of those courses have um, on-campus tutorials or labs or studios and an online offering as well. So there's quite a lot of flexibility there too. Um, it's also really important, like we just saw in the video with, with Rebecca and Kira, um, some of these experiences are really world changing. So the Design Futures Labs, the maker spaces are world class. These are unique spaces that we have on campus. And there isn't really an online equivalent. Mm. Um, so some of our students like to come in and kind of binge on that and, <laughs> and spend lots of days crying over assignments at 10 o'clock at night. Um, others like to come regularly and build that practice. So particularly for those areas where that hands-on experience is important, these are once-in-a-lifetime facilities and it's really important that students have access to them on their terms. Definitely, yeah. And look, Steve, I'm going to stay with you for yep. another question here. I, I don't know whether we're going to throw you under the bus here with this question or not. Okay. Uh, we'll, but we'll see. Back to, you were talking before about, uh, about scholarships, pathways. How many scholarships can an individual student apply for and can they hold multiple scholarships at the same time? Yeah, good question. The answer is yes. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the scholarships website, and, and please do check it out. It's, it's really wonderful, easy to use, explains in very clear language, um, not so many acronyms. Yes, um, very we're, sure. we're very good on the scholarship side with, with no acronyms, um, but it allows you to, to literally tick some boxes saying, I'm a domestic student, I'm interested in arts law, um, here's my situation, and it will tailor those suggestions for you. Um, some of them are one scholarship only, and, and that'll be in the kind of terms and conditions yep. that are there, but many of them allow you, if you meet the criteria, to hold more than one scholarship. So it's really, really important to do that because we each have different needs, we each come from different circumstances, and also our needs change throughout the program. So if you're not successful in a scholarship uh, for term one next year, for instance, you can apply s several times throughout your degree, and that's really, really important, particularly later on in, in the degree, circumstances change, life, life changes. Yeah, and look, that might be a nice segue, actually, because talking about some of the scholarships you might be eligible for later on down the track, exchange uh, and overseas, you know, kind of global experiences are where a lot of the, the current student scholarships go. And I might throw it in Nyonica here. I don't actually know. I'm going to put you on the spot here if you've had some kind of overseas experience or whether maybe your friends have. But students ask, you know, what kind of exchange programs are available? Can you go for a semester? Can you go for longer? Yeah. Um, so I did my exchange virtually during mm -hmm. COVID ah, because I was one of the COVID kids. But I have a lot of friends who have done their exchange. So you can either go for a term, um, you can go up to two terms or even for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And I highly recommend UNSW exchange options. All of my friends who've gone on them, it's been really hard to convince them to come back. They come back, I'm grateful for that. Um, but I'd recommend it because one, the, the universities that we have partnerships are amazing. Um, you know, the educational content, the social development that you have, it's all fantastic. Um, you also get to meet people who have just an absolutely different perspective on life. Mm. I think it opens up so many opportunities and doors for you as well. Um, I, I did an exchange in the Philippines um, it was quite fascinating. I had to work with people from 16 different countries. So while you obviously manage things, you also learn so many things about culture. Mm. You learn about communicating with people. Um, and you just have this open invitation to 16 different countries now. Um, and I, I really recommend that. There's so much to gain from that. And who loves a good Instagram story? Everyone <laughs> likes a good Instagram story. And, and just to add, um, you mentioned um, coming back is also really important because the courses, we, we give advice to students individually when they go on exchange so that we know the courses that they choose can be counted fully mm. when they come back. So it's not extending your degree. Yeah. You can, instead of doing a class in, in, in law or in, in arts, um, here you can go have, have those options available, have them in English or in another language, come back and have them credited to the degree. And having that, the, the equity scholarships, we also offer support for work integrated learning for students, also evens the playing field. Mm. And it's a, it's a huge barrier for entry for many. And ADA is really good at that, I think. Yeah. And just to add on to that, I think um, UNSW, we have three term calendar model and it aligns really nicely with the Northern Hemisphere calendar. So like it's really easy to navigate and plan your exchange programs because when you come back, you're, you don't have to be in the middle of the term or something. Mm. And even like when I'm on campus, I feel like I'm on an exchange because there are actually a lot of international students. And I like that we really, um, like value the diversity because um, we have um, an office solely dedicated for international students and indigenous indigenous students as well. So I really like that we are appreciating that and trying to include as much as much students as possible. Yeah. I, I think it goes back to what Nyanika was saying about just challenging your perspectives and indeed broadening your mindset. 
I think, you know, I, I've had the privilege of engaging with lots of students during my time here. And a lot of them do say when they come back from exchange opportunities that mm. it was actually just, it was the culture shock. And it was getting to, you know, if they were doing a, a, a global practicum, for example, getting the opportunity to work in another, mm. you know, industry overseas and seeing how the, the nuances are different to, to what we do over here in, in Australia. But also just the people you meet. Yeah. Like they challenge your perspectives, but in a really positive way that you know, enriches you and helps yeah. you grow. Now, I'm going to say with both of you for the next question, I might start with Nanika mm -hmm. and then throw to Rebecca on this. Um, someone's asked me a question around, um, firstly, can you do a double degree in arts, design and architecture? I, I'm going to answer that and say, yes, you definitely can. We've got many, many double degree combinations. Um, but the, the second part of the question is actually around what's that balance like in terms of doing a double degree? Is it is it double the duration? I think we heard from uh, our Dean Claire Annesley before that, that it's not. It's actually double impact. What's it like in, in reality? I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say it's double the fun, right? It's because <laughs> you've got two different industries that have essentially opened up everything under the sky mm -hmm. for you. Um, and I really recommend, I, I, I was a commerce and law student, I will accept and I switched to arts and law. Um, and I think it was probably the best decision that I've made because arts really opened up that perspective for me as to thinking about, you know, what I wanted to do with my degree, what's my five year plan, 10 years from now, am I going to be happy in the, in the industry that mm -hmm. I end up in? Um, so in terms of doing a double degree, it doesn't increase any duration, there's no more work. It's just different types of things that you're engaging in. So it's you know, one degree in art and a specialization that you like. So it might challenge the way you think. Um, and another degree, probably in arts as well, that challenges what you like already and mm. you can stick with something comfortable. So you've got this nice combination of having something that challenges you, something that comforts you, um, and you can play around with those and you can, you know, switch between those things. Um, the other thing that it also allows you to do is it really gives you time to think about where you want to end up with your degree because I feel like when you start a degree you feel this compulsive need to be like I'm going to finish my degree in x number of years and yep. this is the exact job I'm going to have and five years from now this is my plan and I can guarantee you you never stick with your plan because you realize actually there's 30,000 things that I want to try and the best part is you can try all of them at UNSW you want to try jobs you can go through the work integrated learning program um, you want to do anything else, you want to do exchange, you can do all of it. So I really recommend a double degree for that. Wonderful. And Rebecca, I might come to you for more of the, the pragmatic side of things. Is it is it a longer degree? Is it double the units of study? How does a double degree actually work? Yeah, so whenever I tell students I do double degree, they always ask, is it double the workload? But it's actually not because um, if you're just doing a single degree, what happens is you have to do like free electives and general education courses. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing double degree, the courses from that degree will replace it. So it's actually double the career options and you actually get more out of it so what I would usually recommend students to do double degree and if you don't like one you can just drop one and I like more than half of my friends are doing double degree and even after their first year full-time study they transfer to another degree if mm. they didn't like it so I like the flexibility you can switch around your degree you can drop one you know so yeah it's just how you navigate and it's better to start off with two and see how you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I, I think you touched on something really important there, and that is the flexibility at UNSW. I think we hear this a lot from students, they, they, particularly as they're coming straight out of high school, they, they don't know what it is that they want to study. And, and I mean, if, if you do, if you're, you're fully set, brilliant, we'll help you get there in the end. Um, but, it, but if you don't, and, and you just want to try a few different subjects, try a degree that you're really interested in that, that kind of, you know, makes you tick and, and that you're passionate about, that career outcome is always there at the very end. And I think we've heard that kind of echoed today that there's so many career opportunities that will emerge, but they actually just emerge kind of organically as well throughout your degree. It's through some of those work integrated learning opportunities through you know everything that's offered throughout our wonderful employability team um, that will be there at the end so it's almost you know focus on your passion first mm. pursue a degree you're really interested in and then that career avenue will come you know down the yeah. down, down the track i think just to add to that the benefit of the arts degree is that you don't have to be married to one specific skill set mm. you learn so many skill sets that when you leave you really are just, you know, a master of so many trades that you can pick the industry that you want to go into. Um, I have friends who've done arts degrees and have ended up in like F1 working for them, who are doing things That's in great. like the environmental industry, um, who are doing things with like social media stars, international stars mm -hmm. across the world. So I think it really shows you that you can really just pick anything that you like because you've got such a good skill set to leave with. Yeah, definitely. 
and, and Rebecca's example is really good. We, we have a lot of students who do that, right? So they do one or two courses and they think, oh, I'm actually really interested in this. And it's like, well, you could do another one and have a minor or a major and do four uh, uh, and do a little bit more up to six. So it's, it's really easy. It's an online form to transfer a degree. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could do it every term if you wanted to. Um, and we give individual advice so that we know that yep. those courses, again, will be counted. Um, and I think that's a really smart way mm -hmm. to, to look at it. Yeah. And we even have some students who finish a little bit early, right? They, yeah. they do an extra yeah. course in a yeah. term or they do something over summer. Yeah. Sorry. Summer term. Yeah. And just to add on to that from like fine arts student point of view, like um, one of the be benefit of studying within the creative field is the flexibility you get because there's not much bound boundaries between each specialization. It actually works all together. So um, although I'm specializing in animation and drawing, I've actually, you know, visited Ceramic Studio, applied for their workshops. Um, I participated in printmaking as well, um, just as part of my studio um, major work. So it's actually, you get to experience different things and actually like all the professors, teachers, they encourage you to try as much as you can because it's available for you, for all the students. Even if you're not in Pennington, even if you're in Kensington studying um, randomly engineering or optometry. I know students came across from Kensington campus just because they wanted to exper experiment and try out, um, try things out. So I think, yeah, it's just, it's open for everyone and mm. it's, I feel so welcome to just try and, you know, randomly pop up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. It feels like, I mean, we are approaching the end of tonight. It feels like that would have been a really nice place to end on, but I'm actually going to throw another question to Stephen. Um, and this is around, going back to portfolio entry, yeah. what do different portfolios look like in terms of criteria A and criteria B? Putting you a bit on the spot here. That's okay. Um, so we've got two different um, pathways or options um, because uh, if you recall a little bit earlier, when Claire was speaking, we've got such diversity in the programs in ADA. So we have more of the creative arts on one side, but then more recently we've been adding the arts, social sciences, and yep. media side of things as well. Um, so in the former, in the in the creative arts, um, so the programs in the School of Art and Design, the School of the Built Environment, um, it's really around the creativity and that vision for creation. So some people um, submit visuals, music, um, videos, um, TikTok dances we've had, um, you name it. It's all about that creativity or that critical ability to look at other creations and, and to tell a story and, and, and kind of present their vision yeah. for what they could do. Um, on the arts and social sciences and media side, um, people then tend to be a little bit more around the text, right? So it's around reading something critically, presenting an opinion, yep. news analysis, things that are happening in the law space, uh, social impact. Um, so it's 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 really flexible. There are lots of options, and and having a look at the uh, the the portfolio website is really really important. It gives really detailed mm -hmm. instructions. It's also not um, a kind of robotic system. So if there are any questions where you're saying, oh, I'm uploading a PDF, but this doesn't work or can I send a YouTube clip or can I link to my Instagram? Again, real questions will respond to you. So it's not something that the gate goes down and you get this sort of um, robotic response. There are people there to help you throughout that process. So if there are any questions around that, but essentially the creativity and that critical thinking is what we're really looking for. And I think just to echo that as well, we've got our wonderful future student advisors who are available all year round to answer those nitty gritty questions. It could be those really basic questions. We were talking about jargon before, um, even just understanding what a major is, what a minor is. Um, it's it's really about working out, uh, you know, what is going to be the best pathway to, to university for you and and really, you know, giving you that support every step of the way. So it could be, you know, support as you're going through and, and filling out your portfolio entry application. It could be, uh, you know, just working out, look, I'm interested in this this study area. What kind of a degree do I, do I study? So th there's always lots of support, as you say, throughout all of those steps. I'm going to cover off just the final question for tonight. Uh, well, actually, the, the second final question. This is the, the final admissions question. Um, we've got a question from the one that says, um, on the website at the moment, it says portfolio entry closes tomorrow, the 28th of April. Um, don't panic. That's for applicants who are applying for term three, 2023. Um, we will be refreshing the website over the coming uh, two weeks and then launching the portfolio uh, early conditional offer portal for T1 for you know, term one, 2024. So don't panic. Um, you don't need to frantically uh, collate your portfolio overnight and submit it. Um, that's just for applicants for term three this year. Um, we'll have you know plenty of time for you to submit your portfolio over the coming months. Um, on that, I'm going to throw one final question to everyone. And that is, if you could give a single piece of advice to you know the students and the parents who are joining us here today, um, as they, they go through that final kind of decision making point in time, they're, they're gearing up for the HSC, um, they've got a bit of a road ahead of them, and, and obviously lots of opportunities ahead of them too. 
what would that look like? And I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm going to throw, uh, I'm going to throw our cameraman off here actually by going back to Stephen, um, <laughs> just to put you on the spot. And then we'll, we'll give our student ambassadors some time to have a think about their responses. So Stephen, one piece of advice to students joining us today. I'm biased. It's going to be portfolio entry again, right? You said something that really resonated um, with me because we, we actually started just marking for, for the next round yep. today. Uh, we just started for those time of three ones. Most of the students um, who submit portfolio um, don't, for, for portfolio entry um, don't actually need the portfolio points. So we have most of them, like a, quite a significant number, like 70, 80 percent. Um, it's a really good safety net. It's a really good way to showcase something that, that you're passionate about. So if you're wondering, if you're not really sure, submit it. Um, it, it. It takes very little time. It's drawing upon evidence and, and work that you've already done. So if there's that doubt of, oh, I might just be too far away from a UNSW degree, I, I, I think challenge that assumption and give portfolio entry a shot. Most people don't need it, but it's better to not need it um, and, and be in that position. So 100%. That's, my, that's my biased uh, yeah, no, no, look, I, I, I love it. I think it's a great piece of advice. I'm going to throw to Rebecca next. So your one piece of advice for the, the students and parents joining us. Right, um, do not panic. Because yeah. <laughs> I was one of those high school kids um, at the beginning of year 12. I actually stressed a lot and I was actually going through like depression. I was like, oh my gosh, if I don't do well, it's the end of the world, right? But then only towards the end of year 12, I started to learn about portfolio entry, mm -hmm. which I participate. Oh, really? And I was Yay. actually one of the students asking questions to you. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> and then I applied for gateway admission pathway as well, and that's how I got early conditional offer mm -hmm. as well. So um, I actually realized, oh, UNSW, they do consider students' circumstances. And that's how I felt very advantaged and supported. And after I, I um, got into UNSW, I learned about transfer, how you can do internal program transfer, you can transfer from another university, you can transfer to another university. And I started to learn about all this flexibility. And that's when I realized, why did I stress so much? Right? Um, and like legit ATI is not everything. They can't tell you everything about yourself. And you have so much more potential than that. So I guess just trust in yourself and not be too anxious. Definitely. Yeah. No, that, yeah. that's really like really great advice. I'm going to throw it to Nayanika to close this out. I think Rebecca just stole my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm going to say that when you apply to university, it's absolutely scary. But think of that fear as excitement. And I think the one thing that you need to know about UNSW is no matter what your story is, what your background is, um, you know, what you want to do with your life as well, UNSW will always have a place for you, for you to write your own story, for you to figure out where you want to go from. And I can say this as an international student, when I first came here, I knew no one. And now I can promise if I walk through the campus, I'll know at least 50 people. So whatever your story is, whatever you want to make out of yourself, there's absolutely a place for you at UNSW and there's support across every level with, you know, if you've got disabilities, if you need assistance, if you're an international student, if you're out of home, if you're under 18, um, if you don't know what you want to do or if you know exactly what you want to do, there is support in every form. And take it from someone who had a color-coded Excel spreadsheet of <laughs> universities I wanted to go to. So there is always a place for you and you absolutely belong in university. So give portfolio entry a chance, look at gateway schemes, look at everything, because UNSW will work hard to make it happen for you. You, you actually stole my thunder because I was going to answer my own question as well. And really, I, I'll just reiterate what you were saying. It, it is about the fact that there's always a pathway to your dream degree. And it is it, it, a lot of the time it's, you know, you're dealing with jargon, you're dealing with you know, universities and it's a, it's a whole new world. It's just reaching out and asking people who, who have the answers, you know, colleagues that, that you know, I, I have here on the panel, um, but also, you know, our wonderful future student advisors. Um, coming along to Open Day is a phenomenal opportunity because you can chat one on one with academics, with our current students. You can get behind the scenes, get into some of the exciting spaces where you'll be learning. Um, and that is the, the best way to understand if, if you know, UNSW is that right university for you. But on the pathway side of things, everything from portfolio entry, um, early conditional offers, our gateway admissions pathway, which you were talking about before, Rebecca, where you, know, you can be eligible for an early offer or an early conditional offer, um, lots of adjustment factor schemes and support. It is just about reaching out to us to find out which ones you're going to be eligible for, um, what degrees you know, you're aiming for and what that, that looks like, how, how your UAC preferences interact. We're here to support throughout the rest of the year. Um, and we wish you all the very best ultimately for your, your studies. So um, yeah, there's always that pathway to a dream degree. We'll help you get there at the end of the day. 
I'm going to throw it back to you, Stephen, to close this out. But thank you to our, our wonderful panelists, Nyanika, Rebecca. It's been great having you here, and, and Stephen as well. Love your insights. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, so you'll see on the screen some important dates for your diaries. In May and June, we also have some information evenings just like this. Um, we'll also then have the UNSW Open Day on September 2nd. It's not to be missed. It's the highlight of our year every year. Uh, and it's wonderful to be back on such a vibrant campus here in Kensington, but also in Paddington. And we've got lots of support available for people moving through those venues. We have, as Nick mentioned, 24-7 um, support. Um, you can connect with us via phone, email, live chat, and someone will get back to you um, really, really quickly. There's always a person at UNSW behind that phone line, that email address, or that live chat, and we're really happy to help you and hopefully see you soon again on the campus.